The fight over minimum wage, the fight for $15 an hour. We have seen protesters take to the streets in cities across America demanding a $15 minimum wage. But is that really sustainable without significant job losses? I sat down this week with New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. I asked her about that and the impact of the growing income gap. The minimum wage debate is ongoing uh, across the country. It is huge right now, very big in this state, in, yes. in New York State, the fight for 15 mm -hmm. among fast food workers. Um, look, I've talked to a lot of economists about this. I've talked to Warren Buffett about this, mm -hmm. who told me as much as I'd like to see everyone make at least $20 an hour, right. it's not feasible without millions of job losses. I'm interested in where you fall on that fight. Well, I think $15 an hour should be the minimum. We have to stop this notion that we want someone to work 40 hours a week and still live in poverty. That is not the American dream. That is not who we are as Americans. So you need to have a living wage. And $15 an hour gets you above the poverty line if you have two kids. And that makes a difference because a lot of these low-wage workers are women. They're women with children. Two-thirds of minimum wage workers are women. And it's fundamentally related to this pay leave issue. How do the numbers work, right? When you, when you just come down to the nuts and bolts and the economics of it all, does it mean I'm paying more for my hamburger? Does it mean that the company that makes that hamburger is uh, their shareholders are getting less? Where does it fall? So every company will make their own judgments. They may decide their CEO doesn't need more than $10 million a year as compensation. They may decide I'm not paying dividends to my shareholders every year. Uh, they may decide um, I'm going to have a happier, healthier, and more productive workforce and retain them longer so I'm going to save my money on not having to retrain new workers because I lose mm. them all the time. So every business can make their own judgment. What happens to this country if the income gap keeps growing? It's a missed opportunity. And you know, if, if you don't see the middle class growing and the middle class rising, if someone is working 40 hours a week and can't find their way to the middle class because they're not earning a, a living wage, it's a huge problem. And what it means is it's a drag on the economy, it's a drag on productivity, it's a drag on entrepreneurialism and success, and so our country is less strong. It could easily result in that, but more importantly, we're not as strong as we could be otherwise. We're not a thriving uh, economy as we could be otherwise. When our economy thrives, it's when the middle class is thriving. It's when entrepreneurialism, innovation is part of every kid when they graduate from college, when they say, I'm going to build something, I'm going to invent something. That's the American story. That's the American dream. You have proposed the Paycheck Fairness Act, and it is still the case as you and I sit here today. Overall, yeah. women still make 78 eight cents on the dollar. Yeah, right. two, two, two men, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you've proposed the Paycheck Fairness Act. Um, I'm interested in sort of how we get there. Do you think that there should be sort of public disclosure that mm -hmm. companies over X amount of employees have to publicly disclose what they pay men and women in the same position? Yeah, so our Paycheck Fairness Act is really a disclosure bill. So it does a couple of things. It says if you talk to your male colleague about what, how much you make, how much she makes, you can't be fired for that. There's companies today, if employees are discussing how much they make, they could be fired. Huh. So it creates protection. It also creates incentives for a company to actually post how much does you know, my cameramen and women earn? How much does my assistants earn? And, 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 and just check so that you're actually looking and creating transparency to say, is it really fair? Do so I? So incentives for that, yes. is it mandated? Yes. Would you mandate it? It's not mandated. It's all about rewarding good behavior. Should we mandate it? Disclosure, yes. I, I think it'd be an excellent idea to mandate disclosure of title, salary. And then so the companies can then begin to discuss, um, are we doing, are we, fair with both female and male employees doing the same job. Um, so I think that's a good idea that we could totally talk about. The Paycheck Fairness Act doesn't go that far. It just incentivizes this kind of disclosure and transparency, uh, and but makes it illegal to fire someone if they're talking about it. So, Do you think we're at a, a tipping point? In this discussion, there's something called the tipping point when there's at least three women on a corporate board when you get to 30%. Hmm. So we call 30% the tipping point. And what happens on a corporate board, let's say there's 10 people and you have three women, uh, the women are listened to more. Uh, they are less talked over. They are less discounted. And so we're not at the tipping point yet in Congress. And so my goal is to get us there. And one of the things I do in my free time is support women candidates across the country uh, to ask them to come off the sidelines. We've yet to see a woman hold the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be president one day? 
Well, I'd like Hillary Clinton to be president. I know one you day. would, <laughs> but I'm asking if you would like to be well, president. I, I don't one day. aspire to it. I feel really. Yeah, I feel very grateful that I get to serve where I serve. Uh, the Senate is a place where I can start a national debate on any topic, whether it's campus sexual violence, whether it's military sexual assault, where it, whether it's paid leave. It's a place where I can have this debate and talk about it across the state with my constituents, but also uh, across the nation. My thanks to Senator Kirsten Gillibrand.